Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'll be showing how to run an IntelliJ project in Java through the console, or the terminal that's built into it. So to begin with, I've got IntelliJ here uh, launched. I'm going to create a new project, and I'm going to just create a standard Java application, so I'll leave all the defaults here. Don't need to check any of these, because I don't need to load any of them. I'll just kind of whip through that. I'm going to call this one uh, demo, let's just call this one demo from command line. I'm going to leave all these other things here. I can change the root directory uh, to anything that would kind of fit my needs. So, this will now launch. Let me just resize the window for uh, the video. So here we have the project. Um, at the bottom you'll see anything, any information about what's going on. A uh, note that just popped up here telling me about uh, the uh, version control system. If I wanted to worry about that, I'm not going to worry about that for the moment. So what I want to do is sort of look at my initial project. So I've got to go on the left side here and expand for under project. If this is not shown, so if, for example, if my uh, view starts off looking like this, it gives me a hint here to view it by Alt F1. It's on the left hand side here. I'm going to expand it under source. There's nothing there yet. So let's create a new class. I'm going to resize this and say right click, new, and let's create a new Java class. And I can name this something like uh, demo args. Now if I do that, it comes up right here under source. I'm almost always going to want to put it into a package. So let me just put that up here top. I can say package, and let's say ca.demo.terminal or something like that is my package. When I save this, it's going to give me an error saying that doesn't fit with the file structure. However, I can go alt enter, and I can then basically correct this. And so it brings up this. I want to move to this correct package, and it then sets up the correct package here on the left. And now let's just sort of create a, a main. So I'm going to do a public static void main, taking in an array of strings. Let's call it args. And so these are the arguments that are passed to my program from the command line. And so from here I can now say, let's just say print them out. So I'm going to print a, put a, print a welcome message. So system.out dot uh, printf, or println, and welcome to my argument lister. That sounds good enough. So I got my program here. Of course if I go to run it, I can say run, and then just run it, demo args, and it'll pop up a box here at the bottom and actually run it for me, which is all my program currently does. But the whole point of this is to run it from the terminal. So let's launch the in uh, IDE terminal. It gives me a folder, or puts me in the folder initially of my project. So if I do a dir under Windows, under Linux and uh, Mac, it'd be ls. So the command here would be ls under Mac and Linux. Um, it'll then show me all the files that it's got. So here we can see that it kind of matches here. The .idea folder, which may be hidden on a Mac or a Linux system because it starts with a period. I've got the out and the source folder. So source is where all of my files go out is where all of the compiled outputs uh, occur. So these are all the build products. So I'm going to say out. Uh, you can type part of it and hit tab and it should autocomplete for you. If I now check out what's here, there's a, a production folder I need to move into. This is all as part of the build system. Um, generating this it could be production or it could be um, sort of test, but for the moment we're set to production. And again, here I now have the uh, project name. So this is my demo from command line project. So I'll go into here. If I do a dir, we see that there's a .ca uh, folder, and that corresponds to this, the ca. And if I were to, I'm just going to dir into the ca folder, and we've got the demo inside of that. And so it's created a nested directory structure for my ca slash demo slash terminal. Uh, that's my my um, package. So if I wanted to actually run my program here. I'm going to type in, uh, I'm going to put a bunch of spaces here to get it all in one line. I just You can get rid of those spaces if your path is shorter, it doesn't matter. I'm going to say Java, and then I need to give it the fully qualified name of my um, uh, class. So I'm going to say ca.demo.terminal, that's just my package as we can read it from up here, and then I give it the name of my uh, class, which is demo args. If you hit enter, we now see that it actually prints out my message that I had here. 
Now, what's the point of doing this rather than just running it through the uh, sort of just tell it to run? Well, here I can easily, from the command line, interact with it and pass it arguments of my choosing and change my mind quite quickly on that. So let's go ahead and write some code that'll print out all those arguments. We have an array here of strings, so let's just print it to the screen. So I'm going to do uh, for string uh, arg in args, and I can just print it to the screen. System dot out dot print ln uh, next argument, and we'll concatenate on args. So this is using a enhanced for loop, or also known as the for each. Make my code a little tighter. So now if I just run this through run again through the menu here, it's going to simply run the program, not printing out any arguments, because I didn't give it any. And you can, through configuring the bit runs so forth, uh, give it some arguments, but oftentimes you want to do it kind of uh, on the fly. So I'm going to go back to my terminal here at the bottom, and I'm going to press up to get the previous command I typed in, and now I can, pa and I'll just, without doing anything differently, we see it does the same thing as before. I'll press up again, and I can something like uh, arg1, uh, next uh, thing to give to my program. And so now we can see here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different arguments handed to my program. And when it runs, it prints them all out here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have to get into this folder to begin with. So once I'm in the correct folder, I can then run Java on it and it will execute. Incidentally, if I don't have a main function, so let me just call this one like main old or something like that, um, I then might have to rebuild my project, so I'm going to hit control B, I think, I'm going to go here, build build project, control F9 it is, and then I'm going to rerun that, and it's going to give me an error here. So it says main method not found, please define a main method, because I of course didn't have a main method that works. If I don't do anything special, let's try this again, I have not yet saved my file, so I made a change here. We're back to uh, having a main, but I haven't saved it. It hasn't recompiled it. So I'm going to save, and I don't believe it's going to automatically compile, but we can test that. So I've saved the, f the changes, main's now back in. I try and run it, it hasn't rebuilt the program yet. So I need to tell it to build, so I need to go here, build project. You saw a little blip across the bottom as it built, and now when I run it, it's back to working. So if you make a change, you then have to force it to build in order for your changes to be reflected down here, because otherwise it's not going to automatically build for you. Okay, thank you very much for watching.